So this is Danny Zacharias, and we're here at uh, Religion Soup 2013. This is Peter Kreft. He just finished giving us a great lecture out in the hall. People are eating lunch now, and I caught you before you headed to the airport. I want to talk a little bit about moral relativity. This is an issue that we are increasingly having in our society, where uh, we get looked down upon if we choose an absolute standard. And so how do we deal with that as Christians, uh, and how do we converse with others who are not of that mindset? The psychological answer to that question is beyond me. Mm. How do you convince people who are moral relativists to change their mind by anything other than intellectual arguments? I'm an absent-minded professor. I'll mm -hmm. give you the philosophical arguments. And right. the, the essential philosophical argument is that moral relativism is a contradiction in terms. Morality is, by its definition, something absolute. Uh, it's not just, if you want this, then you should do this. That's pragmatism. Uh, so unless there's something absolute, unless, unless your conscience clicks in and said, you must do this, you don't have a moral obligation. You just have a practical, pragmatic obligation. So the next question is, how many absolutes are there? Well, there's at least ten, there are commandments. Uh, does that mean everything is absolute? No, the application of them is not. There is moral relativity, but there's not moral relativism. Principles have to be applied to changing times in changing ways but the principles stay the same. So you've got one foot in unchanging principles and you've got the other foot in changing times and you relate them by, by prudence, by practical wisdom. So we stick our, or we derive our principles from the Bible. Those who are arguing for, or seemingly arguing for more relativity, where are they getting their principles from? Culture. Culture. Society. Mm -hmm. uh, we also get our principles, according to the Bible, from conscience. Paul says that even the pagans know those principles, even though they don't have divine revelation, they don't have a Bible because they have conscience, which is a prophet sent from God. It's not infallible, it's human, it makes mistakes, but it has divine authority behind it. And so how do we, again, I imagine you've had numerous conversations with people who argue against absolute uh, moral values and say, no, it's just cultural. My best Changes argument, my best so argument is I've never met a moral relativist who believes that it is morally right to deliberately disobey your own personal conscience. Mm. They say your conscience is relative, do whatever your conscience tells you to do, there's no objective moral law, but at least they have that subjective absolute. Well, where does that come from? Why is conscience such an absolute authority? If it's just the voice of your parents or the voice of society or the voice of evolution, what's so sacred about that? Yeah. That's a dangerous argument because it might make them total relativists. You're right, my conscience is totally relative, the heck with my conscience. Right. But most people won't do that. Most people will say, yeah, it's always wrong to disobey your conscience. Why? And if they pursue that question, it might lead them to God. Mm -hmm. That's a very strong argument. It's called the moral argument for the existence of God. Dostoevsky argued in the Brothers Karamazov, if God does not exist, then everything is permissible. Mm -hmm. And you can go from that in two directions. God doesn't exist, and therefore everything is permissible. Or, obviously not everything is permissible, therefore it looks like there's a God. One last question you said, if we start asking those questions about our conscience, that leads us to God. Can you just fill in that, that, that moving from conscience to God? Conscience is your inner prophet. And a prophet of God is a kind of a mouthpiece. You follow him like a sign, and he points you to God. You can also look at him. Uh, I had two dogs. One was bright and one was stupid. The stupid one couldn't understand signs. I'd point to the dog's food and the stupid one would sniff my finger and the other would follow, follow the sign and go to the food. Well, a prophet is like a pointing finger. If you're smart, you'll, you'll follow the sign. It'll lead you to God. Very good. Well, thanks again very much for being here and we wish you safe travels back home. Thank you. God thanks. bless you.